an egg farmer and we're with the International Egg Foundation to talk about the steps required for producing quality eggs in a safe, sustainable manner. So with me today is Maganda. And Maganda, can you please explain some of the measures you have on the perimeter of the farm as the first initial steps for healthy eggs and happy hens? Yes. One, we have the will bath, which is a risk management measure or a disease control measure that is installed right at the front of the gate to disinfect the wheels of the vehicles that will be moving in and out of the premises. Also, we have the fence that is elected to deter some predators and also stray animals from not getting into our premises. Yes, these are very important measures. It's important that you have these steps in place long before the hens in the barn because if you don't have the proper biosecurity measures in place, then the hens aren't safe and the top quality eggs cannot be produced. So Maganda, should we go in and explore some more? Let's go. now standing outside the barn and I want you to go over some of the features of this barn which really help protect the hens and give them a safe comfortable environment so please would you discuss them okay actually we are talking about site selection here when you are selecting a site for erecting or constructing your barns for the chickens you have to find an area that is clear of vegetation so that you don't have any foreign beds coming in, so that uh, you, you, you prevent them from spreading diseases around. And when it comes to the barn construction itself, it should have a half wall and a screen that will allow air to get in. So we are talking of ventilation now. So it is important to have a well-ventilated environment because we don't want our beds to be affected by diseases. Also, this uh, overhanging uh, curtain, you need it to provide shade in, when it's sunny, when it's winter, you also need to lower it down so that you can provide a warm environment to the beds. Also, you, um, in that regard, you should have got some storage around where you put your feed so that feed is always available. And the storage should always keep uh, rain away or moisture away from the feed. Yeah, those are important factors for sure, because if you want the birds to be comfortable, they need to be kept at a comfortable temperature, not in direct sunlight and overheating, because we know when it gets very hot, we could see some mortality due to heat. The curtains are a good factor that way. Also, uh, the ventilation, the open sides, spacing between the barns, so the wind can blow between to act as that natural ventilation and the importance of dry storage for feed. That's another factor. You want to keep that feed nice and dry. Very, very well set up farm. Maybe Maganda, we can go now and see if Safiso's here and we'll tour inside the barn. Safiso, it's good to see you at the farm today and I see you're changing into your barn clothes. Can you explain the importance of why you changed into barn clothes before you enter the barn? Well, uh, Mr. Richard, this is a uh, uh, barn dedicated coveralls, um, which we change every time when we come in the morning to our barns. We do that because we just want to make sure we don't spread disease to our chickens. Um, we, have in, we have it in line with the biosecurity protocols, so we are just in line with, with that, Mr. Richard. Very good. Yeah. Sophie, so here we are in front of the layer barn and I see a foot bath in front of us. Can you explain to me the importance of this foot bath? So, well, uh, this is a disinfectant that we used to just move everything. When we move everything in and out of the barn, we just walk through, we dip in our feet. We do this because we don't want to spread bacterial infection to our chickens. We just want to make sure that our chickens are free of pathogens. In fact, this helps 
then there's no bacteria coming in to spread to our beds. Very good. And yeah. so then when we gather eggs, the egg cart goes through the foot bath and comes out of the foot bath, so we're not bringing any disease into the layer barn or taking any disease out. Correct, Mr. Roger. All right. Yeah. So we're inside the egg barn now. Can you explain to me the benefits of the housing system we have here? So it's a, a bed trick cage system. It allows the chickens to have free space. It allows the chickens to have feet all the time in front of them. It has got the supply of water through the water line. And the water system, can you explain uh, what you do for maintenance and monitoring the water and where your water comes from? So our water system supply comes from a borehole. So from the borehole, we have our reserve tanks here, which we fill them up. And then we have this black box that serves our chickens with the water. But uh, what we get to be careful of is to make sure that the water tanks are covered with shades in protection from the sunlight. Because uh, if we expose the water tanks to excessive heat or sunlight, it warms up and in that way chickens won't take the water. In, the way, in that way uh, we'll have a negative uh, impact on egg production and feed consumption as well. Very good, so let's move and we'll take a look at the hens. Here we are in front of these hens, and these hens are very nice looking birds, uh, good feather cover. You can tell they're very healthy. You're doing an excellent job maintaining the health of these hens. Very nice egg size that uh, they're producing right now. They're 40 weeks old. Can you explain your daily routine uh, and care for these hens? So thank you. To achieve the sizable egg, firstly, we have introduced the uh, uh, a, a feeding slow, slow feed increase gradually until we maintain this exercise of um, 62 grams. So what we do every day, we come in to, to correct the feed uh, consumption. So in a way, we, we can tell whether we are overfeeding our chickens or we are underfeeding our chickens. If you put more of the feed to the chickens, definitely it will impact on the egg size as well as the egg production as well. But again, uh, we use the, um, the lights we have that helps us to extend the, the duration of the day for our chickens to reach at, uh, nine, at uh, 16 hours of light. So with the introduction of the feed rationing, with the introduction of uh, pan management, all helps to achieve the goal of having this good exercise, recommendable uh, exercise. Yes, and the importance of that 16 hours each and every day on that schedule is very important to that hen because that helps with her ovulation cycle to produce that egg each and every day. You are right, mister. Job well done. Thank you. to build on the conversation of the lighting that we have in the barn and the lighting is also supplemental lighting that is behind us and the spacing on the lighting and how it brings uniform to the birds uh, light for their lay cycle but also the natural light that comes in the barn the combination of the natural light helps with the supplemental light to get that 16 hours of light each and every day for those hens to be able to produce eggs on a regular basis each day would you build on the open sides and the ventilation and the positive effects of that? So our ventilation ages uh, in, in, in bringing in good air quality to our chickens. It helps to keep the, un, internal, the internal environment of our barns with fresh and good air. So with the help of 
the air quality coming in from our both sides of the barns. It helps to get rid of the buildup of uh, ammonia, which is uh, accumulated through the manure, which we need to be collecting like every week twice in a week just to make sure that we keep the internal environment conducive suite for our egg laying process. And now the feed, the feed cart system uh, is a very simple system but very effective because you have hoppers that you fill each day. Uh, you put a very nice quality feed that you're, you're having uh, brought to the farm here. Uh, has the corn, the wheat, some limestone, the calcium, uh, the strength of the bird's bones, the strength of the shell quality. Can you talk about how many grams you're feeding and how you monitor how much feed is it given each day to the hens? We make sure that we ration our feed. At 40 weeks, our chickens were feeding them at 114 grams per bed per day. We don't want to feed more than what is expected from our, our manuals feeding them much higher protein, then it will have an impact on the egg production. Uh, and feeding them as well might have a negative impact as well. But all in all, we just want to make sure we maintain a good uh, uh, feed consumption just to meet uh, the chickens' uh, demand for the egg production and to maintain their body uh, temperature as well and good management on feed, air quality, lighting and water promotes good quality eggs. You're doing an excellent job. So here we are in the egg storage room, but before we get into a discussion about egg storage, we all know it's very important to have a good quality pullet. Do you want to talk about the pullet that comes to the farm, Safiso, and why it's vaccinated? So yes, we get our chickens from our supplier, Piglet's Nest. So we get them at a point of lay. So we are sure that uh, when we receive them, they have been vaccinated at a pullet stage. So when we receive them at a point of lay, they are already vaccinated in case of any out disease outbreak. So we are sure that uh, having vaccinated the chickens uh, helps us to take out from there and move forward with good uh, production. Yep. And so the egg storage here, I can see it's well done. Uh, it's well laid out. The eggs are labeled so you can tell what date they were gathered, which is great and fantastic. Also, uh, I know you do some record keeping. Can you talk about the record keeping uh, in regards to feed and how you collect that on feed and the input? So we, we, we track our feed consumption for the day, for the week, and we can track the feed consumption for the whole, whole cycle of the uh, process. So we do weigh our, our chickens to compare whether the, their weights are in line with the manuals. So as we do that, it informs us of whether we should increase the feed uh, rations. Um, and then we, we, we weigh the eggs as well to see whether it is in line with the manual. If either the eggs are below the target manual, then we've got to increase the feed to, 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 infect, to effect the, the egg production in, 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 that, in that manner. Yeah, and same with the water. I know you track the water. Uh, you have water meters on the barn, so you would record the previous day's water usage, so that way you know if there's any challenges that uh, they can be addressed. The importance of record keeping cannot be understated as far as tracking your feed, body weights and water, because that'll be your first indicators. If the hens are dealing with something, that will show up right away and help you address those challenges. We do address uh, all of those issues. So when it comes to, 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 to making sure that uh, uh, every day we gather the eggs the, on the standard that we need, well, it, it does affect, it affects the production so we make sure that uh, we, we have our healthy beds with regard to giving them um, good food rationing and good water supply. Yep, and the, the eggs are that ultimate result and the eggs that I see here and that were in the barn are of excellent quality 
and you're doing an excellent management job. A job well done. Thank you. We had finished gathering our eggs. We're outside here now, and I want to give you a summary of the important factors when you're going to produce eggs. And it's a reference to the book of the International Egg Foundation. Building on that, we have very important items that we need to cover, is your site selection, your housing systems, and starting with a healthy vaccinated pullet. You have to have good quality feed and water, air quality for the hens is very important, and make sure that you check those birds every day. Health quality is important for good produced eggs, and record keeping is essential. Records help you understand the dynamics of what's going on in your barn, and if there's any concerns with those hens. I want to thank Maganda and Safiso for the time they spent with us doing this video. You have an excellent operation here and something to be very proud of.